everybody. Welcome back to CAT 125R. Um, we're going to be talking today about building your public rep reputation by building on the first two weeks of the course. Um, greetings from Indiana University. I'm looking forward to being back at UC San Diego next week and I'll be having lots of office hours. So please email me if you'd like to meet in person about any issues involving the course or just come by to talk. I've been very pleased to see your response on Piazza to the first couple of assignments and also seeing the way that you respond to each other. Um, I think that you're interested in figuring out how to build social networks, which is great because that's one of the themes of the week. Um, obviously, you're aware of the fact that Piazza, which facilitates two-way communication, probably feels very different to you from something like Zaption, which is much more about one-way communication, in that Piazza, by commenting on each other's posts, you have a way of making your social relationships visible. Obviously, however, Piazza is a different kind of social network site from something like Facebook, where there are a lot of other kinds of interactions that you might have besides commenting on posts that might seem more academic in their origins. For example, um, even though it's possible to share photos and links in Piazza, the rhetorical convention is that students tend to want to help each other focus on those critical assignments. However, if you start by thinking about your own social networks, you'll probably do a little bit better with some of the work that happens in this assignment. Uh, Professor James Fowler will be offering you an overview on research on social networks and then in the lectures I'll also be talking about social networks as a way to understand how audience functions in more complex ways than we might have been talking about in the first uh, two modules for this class. So you'll be watching James Fowler, and one of the things that he'll talk about is a famous study by Mark Granovetter of Stanford University, um, who talked about um, the strength of weak ties and how people rely on social networks to get jobs. In the first assignment for this course that is a longer assignment that builds on the earlier what I learned in college and what I learned outside of college assignments, you'll be thinking about the genre of the personal statement. And what's interesting about the genre of the personal statement is you're speaking to an audience that goes beyond your regular circle of friends and even beyond your um, cohort of colleagues. So beyond your uh, informal relationships, beyond your former relationships with, say, coworkers or mentors or other people in the labs that you might know, um, to thinking about um, audiences that might go beyond your sort of immediate circles of trust. And what's interesting about that is we need to imagine different kinds of rhetorical situations where we actually can't see all of our potential audience members because we know digital files can travel and be shared in ways that might not always be easy to anticipate. But even before digital files could be shared in these ways through distributed networks, it was important to be mindful of social networks and the ways that trust and reputation uh, and credibility might travel from node to node. So that's why it's important when you are thinking about moving from one social network to the next social network that might determine many aspects of your life that you have a clear sense of audience expectations. So in this assignment, we're going to have you think about audience expectations for a personal statement that include writing ability, major areas of interest, research or work experience, educational background, immediate and long-term goals, reasons for deciding to pursue a particular field, maturity, motivation and commitment, realism of expectations, and personal uniqueness, right? What would you add to the diversity of a workforce or to an entering cohort of students? So if you think about the kinds of words that come up um, as desirable in a personal statement, right? Having 
uh, a good background, experience, maturity, commitment, motivation, and realism. These are things that we understand as being uh, attributes of personality that have to do with how someone functions uh, in a social, socially networked situation. Um, and that's going to be very important when we're thinking about the relationship between uh, re potential recommenders um, and the kind of imagined social network that they're going to construct for you. So in some ways you need to be mindful of keeping your story consistent with the people who are also going to be recommending you at the same time. Um, so you need to both represent yourself and be mindful of the ways that others represent you to others. So in this unit, we look at a case where a graduating senior struggled with the question of public reputation um, because of a regrettable video resume versus a case where a graduating senior used digital media to really create a public reputation that helped him launch a media career. And we talked about some ways that we can analyze what challenges uh, Vayner and Kentucky faced when it came to negotiating questions about genre, about audience, about credibility, and about social networks. We also introduced the question of what you do when you have divided identities. Right? How can you make different identities work together? Um, this is something that's already coming up in your What I Learned Outside of College, What I Learned Inside of College assignments. Um, so we talked about the case of a student who had two identities, one as a scientist entrepreneur and one as a competitive ballroom dancer. And the ways that she took those different narratives and managed to weave them together to create a coherent professional story about herself and how she was disciplined, competitive, social, and collaborative. So let's talk a little bit about some specific strategies that you can use. The first is support your assertions. So I'm going to give you an example from an actual personal statement. So gaining experience within different fields allows me to take a holistic and well-rounded approach to business. Through my surgical laboratory assistant position at the UCSD School of Medicine, I have first-hand experience of the methods that are behind research and developing a new technology. After being part of the research aspect of technology, I pursued a business development intern position with Allele Biotechnology, a small up-and-coming biotechnology company. While I was using Brainbow, a fluorescent protein-based technology in the laboratory, I was learning how to market and sell a similar technology to various researchers and pharmaceutical companies. Much to my surprise, there was a distinct disconnect between researchers and technology that could accelerate their experiments. The duality of both positions allowed me to see the development and business side of technology and the importance of bridging that gap. So in this case, the student's insight about a potential disconnect between scientific research and entrepreneurial marketing um, results in, in a, a potential uh, appeal to the imagined audience. Um, it's also an assertion that's supported with ample evidence. We get lots of information about the position in the School of Medicine, the kinds of experience that the person developed. Um, we, we get information about the biotechnology company. We get information, things are defined, right? We know what Brainbow is. So there are a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of great use of evidence to support assertions. Another important strategy that you can use is provide relevant detail. So this one says, as a student, I've also had several opportunities to develop my project management skill set. I am now in my fourth year with both the UCSD Autonomous Airplane Team and the Near Space Ballooning Team, and have served in various leadership positions. I'm particularly proud of my two-year project management role for the, for the Autonomous Airplane Team a multidisciplinary undergraduate competition team that develops a drone capable of autonomous navigation at automatic target identification. Under my direction, a diverse team of aerospace, mechanical, structural, electrical, and computer science engineering students 
is producing a fully functional autonomous airplane. To meet our large project budget, I have successfully sought out business and government funding for the program. So you see there's a lot of supporting detail there. We know about the work environment. We know about the management structure. We know about how it's financed. We know um, its functionality. So we get a lot of supporting detail um, that seems particularly important. It's also important to be mindful of accounting for anomalies. However, this, uh, both strategy three and strategy four, you want to be a little bit careful about, and I'll explain why. Strategy three, accounting for anomalies, you need to be very careful not to say negative things about yourself. Not to say things about yourself that actually sabotage your application. So figuring out a way to um, formulate challenges in a positive way um, is a very important part of accounting for anomalies. So let's take a look at an example. So this one reads, the best music educators I have observed are those whose duties and expertise extend beyond that of their musical niche. For example, a casual conversation about using social media to disseminate promotional material digress to how sports activities can promote choir bonding when used appropriately. I steadily realized that my late started music studies was not a permanent crutch and that my experience with various academic subjects was beneficial. Mathematics helped me develop a critical eye for music analysis and psychology of perception suggested that left-handed students tended to organize pitches differently than those of right-handed students. They contributed toward an interdisciplinary approach to music education. So in this case, the student is acknowledging a somewhat late start, but then the student defends that choice by pointing out that that interdisciplinary knowledge that comes from a knowledge of both mathematics and the psychology of perception uh, actually provides a, a better background uh, to prepare for a career in music education. And finally, you want to explain the program's appeal. Um, I'm going to read a, a nice uh, detailed example with, with lots of supported assertions, and then I'm going to explain uh, one potential pitfall that you want to be mindful of. Because remember that you want to focus on why the program needs you, not why you need the program. Because um, sometimes just your need is not a sufficient reason uh, for another party to want to have you be part of their social network. So the clinical psychology program at UCLA would train me to become a psychologist with strong foundations in both research and clinical practice. So the student is identifying the fact that this program is unique in having both clinical practice and research as foundational uh, tracks in its design. And then the student says, in particular, I'm interested in working with Dr. Jan Bleicher, whose expertise in children with autism is similar to my research interest. Also, Dr. Bruce Baker's interests in developmental psychopathology and effective intervention programs overlap with my interest area. In UCLA, clinical, in the UCLA clinic, clinical psychology program, I hope to gain research and clinical experience in autism treatment for young children. So this is great because it shows that the person has done research about the program and they're trying to really appeal to an audience very specifically. Uh, the cautionary note I would sound though has to do with naming specific people because the challenge is that often in graduate training professors move from one institution to another. So these two professors are probably going to continue to be in the UCLA clinical psychology program, but it's sometimes hard to know if a different professor might be um, traveling to another university where that professor might take a, a position there, or maybe the, the professor has decided to retire, or maybe um, you, know, you don't know what the relationship is between the admissions committee and the professors that you're naming. 
So sometimes a safer strategy is speaking um, about specific features of the program, but not as much about specific people in the program. So those are a couple of notes to think about as you start working toward the larger personal statement assignment with these smaller components that you've been building up. And I look forward to seeing you in my office soon.